Alright, alright, fine. I'll be a gracious host. How you doing? Little Mermaid is the scariest Disney movie fight. by far, though. Why the hell is Ace Blade in your Kickstarter? <laughs> Some comics. We going I'm getting controversial today. We're gonna get controversial today with with my my proudest moment is this interview and being able to talk to you too. Why are you shaking your head? The videos, man. The video it's always something new. It's always <laughs> something new. And I'm like, in my brain, I'm like, has this always been like this? Or have I just missed it? No, that's new. I did that's not new. see the videos with the introductions. I like that's the new hotness. I, I, I did that this week. I had to go through and scour all our old videos to find those clips. Mm. And then I found out that the one video where you're like, the Little Mermaid is the scariest movie, is the one we did with Morgan. It was like the first episode we did or second episode. And we weren't recording at that time. We weren't doing video at that time. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's like the first two episodes we I didn't record the video for. Everything else I have. So. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if you want to record yourself saying I can throw that in there, but otherwise it is what it is. Well, I'll make that, we'll make that happen. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Taurus Comics, in collaboration with Fourth Wall Productions, proudly brings to you the Four Tales podcast. I am your host, Kyron Silva from Taurus Comics, and across the way is the reddish blue dramatist of Ace Blade, Danny J. Quick. And together we are two award-winning blurred comic creators here to help you find your next favorite comic and we are live on facebook twitter twitch youtube and a host of other programs so if you're listening or watching us live thank you for your support don't forget to like subscribe share and review this podcast because all your reviews and interaction help us reach a bigger audience now on today's show we have an amazing creator and writer of the series legacy of the view and boots mr specs thompson but i want to do Real quickly, before we actually get to, into this, I wanted to talk, bring up one thing. Thank you to everybody that actually hit the notify me option on my upcoming Kickstarter, StarCore. Uh, that will be releasing middle of March or so, end of March. Yeah, I know you're excited for it, Danny, because it's a purple superhero. I know. I know. Absolutely. You Absolutely. didn't realize that my... My first comic has his entire Shaman Zesny, all his powers are purple. Did yep, you ever even notice that? That's true, right. but as we have discussed, I've not read Shaman's Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> I I have I have the issues. I just haven't read it. I'm all about Saw. I'm all about Saw and okay. and and Starcore. And right. uh just like with uh with freestyle comics. I'm all about hot shot and vigilance. Okay. I I'm, okay. I might check out the rest of those books. I might check out Cypher and Heroes International eventually. But the ones that I care about, I'm all over them. But I'm okay. a, I'm gonna read it eventually. The important important thing is that I bought the books and I have them. All right. Well, if you do want to see Starcore in the future before the actual campaign on the 11th of March, I will be on Five Star Fridays with Tony Clapper. And Fish Lee. And uh, Fish is putting together something nice for me. I- I've seen some preliminary stuff, and it- it's looking good. It's looking good. So, all right. This, but- is, this is always uh, it's always surprising. I was just on there, and, and he did the the Lumberjacks Ace Blade mashup. He did. And I'm calling Lumber Blade. And uh, I liked it. I liked it. So uh, <laughs> uh, it's always up to, up to no good. All right. All right. Well, without further ado, let's bring in the man, the myth, the writer, Specs Thompson, uh, Legacy of the View. What's going on, What's sir? going on, y'all? Specs is in the building. How are you doing, sir? Pretty good, man. Just got, got finished speed with my daughter, man. She was like, be great. Let me leave. So I had to pee real quick, sneak off. <laughs> you know, those kids, they always wanted attention at the, the very best moment possible. Yeah. Supposed to be asleep right now, but you know. <laughs> right, so what's going on, man? It's been a few months. How you been? Yeah, it's been past a few months. I mean, it, it's almost it's a, it's a whole new year. 
<laughs> but uh it's, it's been good man um getting ready to release my my spin well i have released it at least um the uh issue one of my spin-off series boots the girl the robot boots you know that's a spin-off to legacy the view uh feedback's been pretty good with that so you know it's been going pretty good my second project under my belt all right and that is the main reason why we are here is to talk about your current Kickstarter, Legacy of the View number four plus boots, which is available on Kickstarter right now. It looks like you have 11 days to go and you are really close to hitting your goal. I mean, how does that feel to know that you're less than a couple hundred away, but you have like almost two weeks to go? Yeah, it feels pretty good, man. Well, it, it feels pretty good. You know, I'm almost funny, but it's definitely um, different from last time. Uh, last time, I think I was already funded by now, but, you know, um, People are uh, people are spending more and they, for both projects, so that's better. I got I'm getting more uh, money funded to me versus more people, but you know it's it's good either way. Projects still get done and getting people hands. That's right. That's right. Funded is funded, as they say. Um, mm-hmm. No matter how many days it takes you to get there, no matter how many backers you got. If you reach the goal, you reach the goal, and and that's something to be proud of, and that's something to be happy about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Looks like we have John is in the building. What's up, John? Hope you're doing all right. So, tell us about Legacy of You for anybody that hasn't read the story before, um, and Boots, because this Kickstarter is for both books, not just Legacy of You. You're actually funding both stories. So, tell us about each series individually. Okay, first, you know, I go with the, the OG, you know, Legacy of the View. Um, Legacy of the View is about a high school teenager named Chad Johnson, who is a, a aspiring, aspiring musical engineer um, in his uncle's studio. Um, I chose to make a, him a, a studio engineer because most people don't know what that is in the music industry. Most people know the artist and the producer. But I wanted him to be an engineer, so like an a, a, a unsung hero of the uh, studio life, uh, which is the guy who actually records and makes the music sound good. But on top of that, he's a uh, uh, baseball player, video game, he likes, uh, you know, another typical high school student type, type stuff. But he has the power, you know, to stop the, the how, which is trying to take over human race. And his power is to create items out of thin air. But he has to know about the uh, item prior. So, like, he can make a... Uh, uh, a frying pan, you know, come out of nowhere. But if you try to make a car, he has to know how that car works. He has to know how the engine works, the uh, the axle, the uh, how the rims connect to the, uh, the the brakes and all that stuff. He has to know everything works and work. It can be a car, but it just wouldn't roll or blow up quick or something like that. So in his world, he's the only one that can kill the how effectively with his power. You know, he doesn't want to do it because he's a real blood hero. He just want to be a regular high school kid, but when the time comes, he has to suit up, become a view, and get a job done. And, okay. um, yeah, that's basically you know synopsis of uh, what's going on with the view. Uh, now, Boots is a direct spinoff to the Legacy of the View. It um, has to do with one of his classmates that uh, I introduced officially in issue three, but she's making like, a little cameo in issue two. But um, you don't have to read um, Legacy of View to get into get into boots. Uh, it just you know make you a better reading experience if you would. But uh, it takes place a little bit after issue one of um, Legacy of View, um, and it sends her off in space. Uh, but before she gets to space, um, you find out that you know she's a Haitian uh, Japanese um, kid. Uh, she's born from a, a, a powerful zoo in Haiti and the daughter of a, a Yakuza who's doing deals with each other. And then one day they, um, you know, like romantic, they clean love and, you know, got together and made Boots. And once, you know, Boots' granddad found out about that, he was upset. Then he came down towards, you know, some straightening about it. And caused a whole bunch of turmoil which sent her from being like in a peaceful loving environment to the kids on, in the slum in, in florida which she grew in power to become the top ninja for hire in, um, in the world until she was sent off the world to somewhere else where she had to build her fame reputation again 
and you know try to make it back home. Hmm. Nice. Okay. But, I got a question about that, but I'm gonna ask it later. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, That's a tease, is what we call that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, what? Okay, I know what you're writing. Okay, and I know from the last conversation that we had that you're in the anime. What comic? What kind of comic books are you reading, and what comic books are inspiration for? Legacy of the View and Boots. Um, I'm really, honestly, right now I'm reading Marauders, uh, uh, X Men Volume Two, uh, both Power Ranger runs, mm-hmm. and um, Suicide Squad and Titans Academy. That's what I'm reading. That's what got me stuck right now. Uh, inspiration for a Legacy of the View. I don't know. Cause it's just a hybrid of different things, but like I say, if anything, may, people didn't tell me it got a Peter Parker feel to it. So maybe uh, Spider Man, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, I want to say Green Lantern. You know, maybe my hero, maybe not my hero. I can even yeah. Yeah, I saw your the description uh, in one of your one of your Instagram posts how uh, Peter Parker, you know, works his job. Excuse me, so he can be close to action. Clark Kent, you know, works his works as a reporter, so he can be close to action. But um, but your character, you know, tried to stay as far as far away from the action as possible, and it still didn't work out for him. So that's that's kind of dope. I like that. And it's a play on his actual like, career path too. You know, being. Uh... Being um, uh, in the studio, you know, most uh, student engineers are not in front of the camera and not known about. So mm-hmm. with him, it's the uh, same thing with his superhero life. So it, it co- goes into each other. You were mentioning that uh, you're reading Power Rangers. And that seems, at least to me, it feels like it seems like that's having a huge revolution again. What's the... I, and I, yeah, I got it. Let me just rephrase this. I grew up when the OG Power Rangers came up. Like, I remember watching the first episode with my best friend at the time, and we we're like, this is just Voltron, <laughs> which is, you know, martial arts fighting. But where did this love, do you think that Power Rangers has, where do you think that came from for people now? Like, it just feels like they should have died off by now. Where do you think this love for this series continues from? Why do people keep hanging on to it so long? I think it's simply nostalgia. Uh, if it's not that, I think it comes from that movie that was like mid that came out, and people was, was wanting more, and the comic book gave them more because it's the same OG characters. You know, they try to make in the uh, the movie, but they brought back the same characters. You know, I want to say the same mannerisms and, and stuff. I, I can't really co-sign that, but it look it looks like they, they could be the same from the show. And more, uh, you getting uh, backstory and parts as you miss from the show, or a lot of callbacks. Mm-hmm. And like now, they even expanded it even more. So I guess it's just like people want more and more from that, and uh, it's giving it to them like full force. So I think that's where it comes from. It's, it's not a bad read, you know. The art's good, you know, and you you get to see like. How the show commented on this about, uh, let's say, Kimberly's parents, but you never uh, seen it. But now they show you what was going on with her parents. You seen why Billy did this, or you seen what really happened uh, of Zach, Jason, and, and Trini when they went to the the peace conference. You know, stuff like that. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean. I, I've never been a huge fan of this series, but I might check it out. Everybody seems to be saying that it's great and. I don't know. I'll, I'll I'll pick up a copy and see how I feel about it. Yeah, start with the Lord Dragon stuff. You know that should draw you in. You familiar with the just the the Lord, the Green Ranger, and the White Ranger? And that should bring you in and you can go from there. Man, that was Tommy, there, right? Pretty, uh, huh? Tommy. That was Tommy, the Green Ranger, White Ranger. Yes. Oh, and speaking of you know nostalgia, there was also a, a myth out there that it was seven Rangers, and currently. Uh, there are seven rangers in the book right now, so 
that that side of me because they talked about it in the show that plus it's seven right in the middle so they never made it but in the book there's seven of them right now hmm. all right i didn't even know that was a thing i didn't either um i haven't i'm i'm like kyron i uh i watched it when i was in school and then uh i was like okay cool that's enough of that <laughs> yeah. but, but i did take my son to see the i think it was two movies that came out right it was two two films that came out within the last you know five six seven years or something like that and um Dang. they've had that many know, recently i think it was yeah, two I I think one. If it's a single, I never heard about it. Or it's, was it just one? Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, then I I took him to see that, and ever since then he's been watching everything Power Rangers. Like he literally thinks he's a Power Ranger. So, uh, <laughs> um, he, you know, he loves Power Rangers, and I, and you know, I started buying him the comics, but I haven't read them. So maybe I will. Maybe I will check him out. All right. Let's get back to I guess your Kickstarter because. We definitely want to do what we can to help you reach your goal. And, and in this Kickstarter, you're actually funding for both books, like we mentioned, Legacy of the View and Boots. What was the thought process as far as wanting to fund two books at the same time for one Kickstarter? Um, two reasons, actually. Um, personally, just having self doubt and not thinking that my fourth issue of you could fund the um, correct amount of money by itself. Hmm. And uh, on top of that, uh, not knowing how to market manga because uh, manga readers they consume manga differently than people who read comics. They mostly, you know, have theirs on a subscription type thing, or they read for free through like webtoons and whatnot. So I, I read. I really wanted Boots to come out, but I didn't want to take a, a huge L putting out at the same time. So I said, well, I just pair it with Legacy of View and go from there. And you know, I think that's pretty good so far. And you know, hopefully, you know, I can uh, mark, learn to market it better. And like with a Kickstarter, you get uh, the physical copies of chapter one, two, three, four, you know, that I won't be putting out at all. Like, if somebody wants to get boots after the Kickstarter, it's going to be the digital form until they wait till I put out the graphic novel form. And just, just, mm. you know, how they fit with now, one of the things I was actually very intrigued about with your Kickstarter, just going through it, is you have an option to have someone basically where when you're, you're going to help someone create a comic if they, you know, pledge at the right. Now, how does that work for anybody that's maybe interested in doing that? Because a lot of people I know are scared to get into comics, so they just don't know how to do it. So how does that work as far as you helping other someone else create a comic? Uh, basically, they, they choose that tier. You know, I basically will hold their hand and, and you know, help them with it. So, you know, um, you know, I'm a writer and I got a couple artists, you know, I can pull from. But if, like, they got an idea, I like, say they want to make a, I don't know, their own Transformers type comic book, you know, I can... Uh, they can shoot me their their pitch or their concept they got. You know, I can write something and help them come up with you know a couple pages, and they like it. Yes, you know, no, we can revise it and keep going forward. But mostly, you know, uh, so they get a hold of an artist that wouldn't keep their head in on prices. You know, uh, you know, I, I I just do it off of you know some handshake stuff, and you know, give it to my artist. You know, let them do their artwork. You know, I give that person their comic book and they can be proud of it you know what it is or they can go for it and be like hey i made the combo you know how do i sell it then you can go that route you know and i can help with that but basically so somebody can they got a dream or a concept they can be done physically and you know be proud of it actually. and how much input do they get on that whole process i mean complete i mean if there's you know you know uh you know we just basically just help them out with it you know giving the artwork you know they get revisions on it so it is there they pay for it so you know um that's it you know so they like it they can keep it i mean it's there i mean they pay for it it's not like you know i got full lotion over it or you know it's my stamp on it it's mine you know it's my, under my company it, it's there it's just uh basically i guess it was at a con if you something you know yeah. for, they can get 
get it, take it home with them, and you know, hang up the wall or sell it, whatever they want to do. Okay. I just thought that when I was looking at the uh, the rewards for it, I was like, that's I've seen that done before, and I've always been interested in helping other people out and you know do what I can to further their dreams. So I thought that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I think now, last time, I think last time I had somebody choose it, but I mean, they never. I can never heard from again. So like they got the tear, but you know, I never heard from again. You know, I, I've been trying to reach out because, you know, I want to do it, you know, <laughs> just, you know, see what happens. But I think the person's like overseas somewhere and I just, you know, I don't know, no, no number or anything. All I can do is send letters and emails. So, hey, well, that's free money. I mean, not not that free money. <laughs> Free man, no, man. Right? Free money. <laughs> they wanted they wanted to support and you know uh, and one thing i learned about kickstarters is that you you really have to you know you can only do so much when it comes to your your part of it right um there is that extra step that people have to take about filling out their you know their their reward tiers and stuff like that and sometimes no matter what you do you can't get in contact with people you only you literally only have their kickstarter um, account and their email address sometimes and sometimes you don't even have their email address so um if they're not paying attention to it then you know it can go a long time without you i've I've still got people from from villain season that from the kickstarter campaign i did last year i still haven't filled out their stuff and i've been you know you only all you can do is do updates and tell people hey if you if we missed you reach out to me send me an email and i'll you know I'll I'll try my best to, to make it happen. But after so long, you know, you kind of have to move on. But um it's always good to have people want to, to support you and and to and to and to do and to you know do pledges like that because it does help to keep creating. And um like I've <laughs> we were just talking, I've bought books that I literally haven't read. Shaman's Destiny is one of them. Um and <laughs> I don't think you actually read comics anymore. I just think you just buy them. <laughs> And then you just put no, it to I, the side. I still, read, I still read books. Uh you just look at the pretty pictures. Often, just not as often, just not as often as I could can. So, you know, I, I like to buy comics just you know to collect them and eventually read them. Um, but you know, it's kind of the same thing. I bought it, I bought it, and I'm supporting the the artist and I'm supporting the writers to keep going. And I know that like with the seven secrets, you know what I'm saying? Like I I I've bought 12 of those issues because I know I want to read them, but I've only read one of them. So um, it's the same thing. Okay. Understandable. Yeah, yeah for sure. So with uh, the new issue Legacy of View, what's new in the series? Because this is the fourth issue. Um, for anybody that's already read one through three, what can they expect with this fourth issue? Um, the fourth issue is a bigger book. Uh, Shipping and marketing that. I think I'm gonna change it at the interview. I'm shipping and marketing that. But it is on the Kickstarter. I did say it's a bigger book. So this this is a 40 page, you know, floppy. Uh versus it's a typical 24, 28 I've been doing. Um and with this you get to see a little brief origin, I guess, you of Chad at the beginning. I'm adding that to see uh what started all this almost uh, just to give the the climax of the story more more of an uh, feeling, you know, why he's mm-hmm. feeling the way he's feeling during the fight. So I'm adding that, and I guess that's the, the extra twenty pages or so. And uh, you know, climactic ending, you know, uh, could be in it, the end of Chaz in the view. Uh, you never know. It's you know, it's, a, it's a definitely. One. Uh, if you want to tell everybody right now, Danny's definitely team spoilers. So if you want to drop a spoiler or two, that's fine. Yeah, you dropped, uh, spoilers. You dropped a couple of spoilers last time he was on here. Just keep the tradition alive. Go ahead. Okay, a couple of spoilers. Okay. Uh, let me see. The view definitely need a new mask. I'll tell you that. <laughs> okay. okay. But um, um, definitely ending. Um, the ending scene. My, I guess my final ending scene. You, you see more of my characters. Uh. I don't know the cool word for it, but it's basically. Wait, do y'all do y'all read? Y'all y'all read or uh, watch anime, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, so it's basically, anime, but yeah, it's basically the tr- the, the trope is like uh, 
like in Naruto when uh when uh Neji was beat was Neji was beating up his, his cousin. Everybody jumped in and tried to save him, save her. Something like that happens with with, with Chaz. Like all of my some of my characters jump in, you know, to uh, to save Chaz. You can see a, a, a handful of my characters come out. Yeah, get that That's power up. What they what they get the pile on, and then everybody. <laughs> <laughs> gotta, yeah, yeah. You gotta you gotta yeah, have I, one of those moments for your hero. Yeah, yeah. My favorite is um with uh, Black Clover when during the uh, tournament or they uh, get ready to kill the guy at the portal. Oh yeah, yeah. Brother, yep. All the, all the black bull game. Like, all right. Danny doesn't watch Black Clover, so he doesn't know about that. I don't. You gotta get it. You gotta get in that man. It's it, it's it's funny. It, it just, I try. I've been trying trying these. You gotta push through it. You gotta push. Through, you gotta push through that part. <laughs> there are a lot of filler episodes in that series. There really there, is. There's a bunch of anime people have been suggesting saying that they're really good, and I watch a couple episodes and be like. I don't like this. Like, I just don't like. There's a lot of them that I just don't. I can't get into. And if I my standard three, I think th- I think what's different is that my standard three episode, um, try it out for uh, like American cartoons or or TV shows or whatever. You got to give anime a whole season. Like, you got to give an anime a whole, you know, fifteen twenty episodes before you know if you're really gonna like it. And I don't. I just don't. I don't I don't be having time. I, I won't give it that much. I don't. I don't cut off some pretty early, but uh. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't give it. Just like uh, I'll, there's one that I got to talk to you about later because you said it's one of your favorites, and I hate it. I really just hate that anime. But we'll talk about it because right now we're gonna do uh my quick takes for uh. Okay. I don't know if you remember last time we did a rapid fire five questions. Yeah, and you you got forty five seconds to answer off the top of your head. And um, we're going to get into it, man. We're going to get controversial today. All right. All right. One sec. Quick takes. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. So question number one, I want to hear your opinion on who are the top five DJs of all time? Uh, DJ Anu, DJ Cali, uh, uh, Drama, uh, Death, Death, uh, Death Sight, and uh, DJ Kid. I'm David Kid. Wow, so no DJ Jazzy Jeff. That's how I, I was thinking it. the exact same thing. We're, going, we, we're just gonna disrespect DJ Jazzy Jeff and DJ Quick. All right, no problem. I, I got you. Yeah, I, I, the Quick. I, I, you know, I heard about Quick, but I, mean, I know about Quick, but he just not in my top five. Like he, and, you know, I put him up there on the greats, but what mine say, you know, I I personally looked up yeah. to was definitely DJ you know, Like he the one that really got me, you know, DJ. Like, that why. <laughs> I feel you. Okay. Um, question number two. Um, did you watch you watch the Super Bowl? Uh no, but the Rams okay. my favorite team though, so you know. Did anybody the Rams watch are? the Super Bowl? The Rams, yeah. Oh, I thought you were a Falcon fan. Um okay then. I'll, you want I'll, me to switch I'll... question two real quick? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um right. last time we talked about the Atlanta Falcons, me and you were discussing the uh, the Panthers versus the, the Rams. I mean versus the Falcons. Um, and during the Super Bowl, we saw um, Matthew Stafford. He was doing some no-look passes. And people were like, yo, this dude might have superpowers. Like, how can you do that in football? Um, so I want to know, which NFL player do you think secretly has superpowers? All right. Hold on. You, you switched that on me at the last second. <laughs> <laughs> you... All right, go ahead. Uh. Randy Moss, uh, a bit, uh, my bit got the speed. John Elway, and uh, can't think of dude's name, Ray Lewis. Oh, Ray Lewis, yeah, hey, okay. them dudes, yeah. hey, I, I think all all NFL players have a secret, have a superpowers. It might have came in the form of a needle, but they, <laughs> they, they, they still have it. <laughs> All right, uh, number or three. Cocaine, which... 
uh, something, something. I seen any given Sunday. Um, <laughs> <laughs> number three. Um, so you you included some some Japanese characters in your uh, in your Kickstarter. I want to know what do they mean. Uh, girl with a robot boot. It's like Robo something 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 because uh, boots has uh eventually get robot boots so she can create her mecha suit uh that she would use in space so it's kind of like a uh a hope buster or iron man type of suit uh it's basically a hybrid you know kind of like a sailor like her like sailor suit when she transforms like, so. or uh like a killer kill type of suit. okay all right all right um i'm gonna give you more of a chance to expound on boots in just a second but I got one more question before that. And this is question the worst number- question on, on the whole list right now. <laughs> question number like you're about four. to get us canceled for this one. <laughs> I tried my hardest. My oldest daughter and my sister both told me that Demon Slayer is the best anime out. I remember out? talking to you last year, and you said that Demon Slayer was one of your top anime at the time. I hate Demon Slayer. It is trash to me and garbage what is it about this show that people like so much i think it's a crying actually all the <laughs> every time a demon dies you, you gotta do a whole oprah type episode about it but other than that i think it's the artwork the artwork is uh pretty great and um i think it's also about the mystery of the, the artist uh, creator whoever it is because i thought it was a female but in research nobody knows what what they look like or what it is. But I think it's a female artist. Uh, on top of that, it's just uh, maybe the action. Maybe how the depth of the combat works. But it's, okay. You know, it's nothing special, but maybe the artwork. It's nothing to do with the story. Okay, cool. I understand that. I <laughs> wait, like, wait. We just going to gloss over the, the connection that Tanjiro has with Nezuko. And, you know, this is his whole plot. It's him trying to find a way to save his sister. Oh, isn't it the same thing in Black Clover with the guy with the mirrors? <laughs> yeah, but that they're not the they're not the Okay, wait, wait, no, okay, that's different though because <laughs> yeah. they're not the main character and he's a he's a pervert. <laughs> that's a real, that love and that relationship between the two of them is creepy. But Tanjiro and Nezuko, that's actually that 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 love that you have for 17 for, 18 you know, Dragon Ball. Yo, they they all right. They, they, this dude literally is carrying her around like a Pokemon. And yes. making her battle. Oh, I just, I yeah, just posted a, a meme about that. I, I, I oh, show, yeah. I share, I share, I share later. Wait, have you guys I'm seen like, the cosplayers like, that do that though? That actually carry somebody in in the background. I did see a really? great, a great yeah. cosplay though, like where uh he came out. He had the sword with the sparklies and all that stuff, and you know she popped out of the bag. She popped out of the little case. You know, mm-hmm. started running around with the little thing in her mouth or whatever. And then yeah. he took the sword and it was sparking. It was a dope cosplay. But still, the show is just, I don't, I can't get past six, six episodes. I was like, I'm, I can't watch this anymore. I just can't oh, do man. it. And, and seven episodes the is the best one. Dude, you got to get to seventh episode. That's the best one. I, 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 I'm just, I'm just, I, and I might, I might try to move it because that's what's got, that's what got me into uh, My Hero. That first or the second My Hero Academia movie, um, that joint was so, I had never seen any, any other episodes before. But that movie was so good that I had to go back and watch the show. Dang. Mm. Well, the movie is basically just season two. Uh, <laughs> it really, it's like the, the movie is they just break it up into season two. So Dem- talking about Demon Slayer. Talking yeah. about Demon Slayer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I so got you. You want, um, you want to continue right, on? So, go season two, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So last but not least, last time you were on here, you told us about the Fire Brigade, and you ran out of time before you could tell us about Boots. I want to know where did the name Boots come from? I, of course, you already said it in the in the past uh, in the past one, but uh, just expound on Boots a little bit more since that seems to be one of the, the focuses of the Kickstarter. Uh, Boots is definitely uh, so she she so she's gonna be a foreign a foreign kid, right? So she come to high school first time, never went to middle school and middle school like that. So come to high school, she got these raggedy uh, combat boots on. People can crap about it. Like, Look at that girl with them boots. Ah, her name boots. Da da da. Out driving on her and whatnot. You know, you know how thugged out she is. And they get beat up 
or papped up a couple times or one of her like uh homegirls do it and they don't really call her boots like that but they still call her boots you know behind the back but this is a nickname that the kids call her but actually it started out as a negative thing towards her but that's a pretty positive about the act. all right i feel you on that See, I thought that I thought her real name was Boots, and I was like, "How did they call her Boots before she got the boots?" I don't understand. But see, now that you broke it down, she got the name in high school. She got the nickname because of the boots. It makes more sense. Okay, I'm cool with that. They see you thought it was Dora. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> see, you got you got the Z, you got the Z on it, so you know. I, I, just play sure. All right, all right. Well, that was uh, Danny's quick takes brought to us today by Two Eye Tales. Check out their book at twoeyetales.com. Don't look at me. We got a sponsor. We actually got a sponsor. What? I know. You, you, Isn't that I mean, your brand? <laughs> no, it's not our brand. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said they wanted to sponsor it. So I was like, Phew, all right, go ahead. Easy peasy. <laughs> it's not, a, it's not a, a paid sponsor at this point, but we're going to work on stuff like that. We're going to make it happen. Hey, we, we got our first something. sponsor. We won't do something like that soon. We've been we've been making up sponsors for every show, so it's good to actually have an official one. <laughs> and now a word from our sponsor. And now we go right back to the show. Ooh. All right, all right. So we have a couple more minutes left over. So I want to know um, what is life after Legacy? Like, what's going on after issue four? Do you have other books on the horizon? What do you have planned for the upcoming years? So I'm trying to get away from Kickstarter, man. I'm, I really, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like what I have to do <laughs> to get away from Kickstarter. You know how, that, but um, but you can't just gloss over. Like, what do you mean you don't like it? Like, what is it about Kickstarter you don't like? Just, just a commitment, you know. Uh, like, I don't mind doing the shows. Like, I, I can do. I can, I already do like a show like a once a week, but like trying to set shows up and people counseling on you, and it's just like uh, they're always the constant posting like, "Hey, hey, 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 remember this, remember this, remember this." It just seems like I'm just, I'm I'm begging, and it, but I'm not begging, but it feels like I'm begging at the same time. And it and I'm basically just getting off work or and doing interviews or posting or before work, you know, doing interviews and posting. It's just a lot. Um, so with this Kickstarter, you know, I'm doing Legacy View, of course, you know, get out of the way. But with Boots, I'm doing four books. So I'm getting funded. So now I'm dropping on four books throughout the year versus every time I get a new book, like I do a Kickstarter. So let's go ahead and knock that out of the way. Even though I'm taking a, a kind of an L on it, I'm still getting the, the books in people's hands. So people getting in different books and maybe they can make a post about it and people go on my website. And actually buy the chapter one, two, or whatever they missed, you know, from a website instead. Why people getting the physical copies in their hands from the Kickstarter? But besides, and the boots coming out throughout the year, you know, I'm probably, I'm, I'm not probably, I am. I, I'm dropping the Fire Brigade, you know, in September. I probably make it special and drop it on September 11. You know, depending if we're in World War Three or not, you know, I might hold up, but. Uh, <laughs> I might drop it in September 11th just for because it has to deal with firefighters, so I think it mm-hmm. might nice. do well dropping in that date. Um, then I have uh, I don't know if it's called a spin off series, but it's kind of like a, a slice of life webtoon. Like, I'll, I'll be doing it, be, it, it might be free, or I might do like a small script based thing called Georgia. Uh, urban stories. It's going to deal with the characters like Chaz, you know, Boots, and, and whoever else I have. Just everyday life. You just maybe something in pop culture happened, and I do a, two or three pages about it and put it out. It's just what they're doing besides their typical stuff inside the book, you know. So, like, uh, some, them at lunch table at lunch, or them, you know, at home playing the game, something like that. But it's going to be like funny. It's going to be like funny thing. Nice. All right. Awesome. I mean, at least you have that that planned. I know a lot of us, as far as comic creators, when we have something coming up, we're like, we don't really plan past that. So, so it's really cool to see that at least you have that planned for the future. I got so much I want to get out, but I just don't have the money. You know, I got I got notebooks, notebooks of stories, so you know I can put out just I 
need my mental. That's all I need. I mean, have you ever thought about just writing a novel for it then? Since that's, like, that's he's what, written a novel, you can hit well, him up that's for what, uh, See, it's been a year, so I think I didn't tell y'all, but um, Fire Brigade has went from being a comic to a light novel. So it's going to have some panels and pages in it, but mostly just, uh, you know, just a written form. Okay. Nice. So that was, that was because it was going to be like, I think I planned to be 100 pages in, in math, and it didn't make sense. Yeah, I, it was no way I could have sold that and, and make money or even fund it. I could probably could have funded it, but it just wouldn't have made sense. So I was like, okay, I'll do a novel version of it. Okay. All right. Well, if you ever need help, I'm pretty sure Danny will be willing to provide any kind of resource that you need outside of money. Because he's got all his money tied up in his business right now. So yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. It looks pretty, pretty dope. Is there anything? In, is there anything in your area like that um, where an independent creator has opened up their own shop or anything like that? Uh, I don't know. Not 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 at all. Really, I'm in Augusta. It is definitely not here. And I'm trying to think about Atlanta. I don't think nobody in Atlanta has, has challenges. Did challenges is up there, and it's um, even though it's more of a comic book a retail comic book space you know um tony and them they make make their own books so um oh, okay. i would consider i would consider them just kind of in the same lane okay. well, I, I didn't know but see that's the confusing part of it like i see uh your store and think impound it's like just strictly based on off of your project and these other mm-hmm. ones look like it, just, it blended other stuff but like, i think both of y'all are like pure Mm-hmm. But, but but other than that, people just do like clothing stores and shoe places here, and, and of course restaurants. Nobody really try to brand it all the way. If they do, it dies off pretty slow. Yeah, and that's and I'm thinking about that Georgia and Carolina. I sit right on the border, and I really can't think of anything like that. And it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty, pretty big number of breeders around here too. So I don't know what what's hold up. <laughs> Well, it's a goal. I mean, I know for myself, I would love to open up an own shop. I know a lot of people want that just to have your own nexus where everybody can just come to get your things. So it's a goal. But you have a lot of work coming up that I think a lot of people will be excited for. You just got to find that right audience for it and and you'll get there. Just got to keep pushing, keep hustling. You'll get there, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right. Well, we've we've posted your Kickstarter in our links. I will post it in the show notes of the um, podcast. But where can everybody find your work besides the Kickstarter? Um, LegacyView.com. That's the official website. You know, uh, you know, it has merchandise on there. You know, Legacy View one through three on there right now. Four should be on there. What two months after the Kickstarter, I believe. Uh, Boots Chapter One is my website, but I have it hidden. Uh, so as a Kickstarter, you know, one should be available for people to read, and two, three, four should drop within the year. Nice. Um, nice. And besides the website, you know, Legacy the View on Instagram, Legacy the View on Facebook. Then I'm currently on Twitch now too. Um, uh, I'm thinking about dressing up as a view. And uh, doing Twitch live things uh, because you know Chaz is a gamer, and you know you can look up at No Eye Sensei. Uh, mm. That's his gamer tag in the book, so I made the gamer tag, you know, for Twitch. So it could just be something kind of related, you know. And um, you could do something with him doing music too, right? Dress up as him and do some music. Yeah, I got I got a lot of stuff planned. It just uh, I just got got to get got get the rolling on it, like. I got so much opportunity just who I am and what the book has. Like I'm already have like different local artists inside my book. Like in the background, people can read about them and learn about who they are. So I can mm-hmm. do so much more, you know, do you know, do a small video like TikTok and stuff with my character, you know. So it's okay. it's a whole new level. I just gotta get roll on this side being lazy or scared or whatever I got going on. I don't know. <laughs> I definitely got a costume, the cut with a view costume sitting in my trunk. Uh, I got it ready to go. I just got to put it on. And- hey, don't let it sit in the trunk, man. You got to take it out. 
Yeah, I haven't seen no action yet. I haven't seen the house, so I haven't seen the reason to put it on. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Be like that dude up in Seattle fighting crime, man. You're right. I know. I thought. I know. I follow him on Instagram. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. His, uh, his name is Phoenix Jones. Yeah, yeah. I actually follow him. He he just suited back up uh, recently too. Yeah, I think at one point he had like three or four other people with him fighting crime. And well, he got. Yeah, he got several documentaries about him. He he's uh the stories he's very uh, narcissistic and uh so like it gets bigger than just be not the saving but um you know people I guess mm-hmm. <laughs> so people you know to be down for it then be like Ugh, this guy's kind of crazy or, or he's doing too much. yeah I read some of the stuff about how he's been shot and stabbed and I'm like nah that's not for me. I'm not about that life. <laughs> After that I, first I time, I'd be like, "I'm done. I'm out." But but he but he's really his outfit now is basically a uh, uh Batman's uniform and on um, Future State, like how is the Nick? No, not Future State. They like the new Batman movie. That's how much armor he has now. It's like yeah. custom armor he has just for that. And I was like, man, that is crazy. Is it really that deep in Seattle? <laughs> like, <laughs> Well, we did legal out there. Like, what's going on? <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, I know. I know what's going on. They have a um, it's a law out there. Uh, that if it's a conflict, they can uh say where basically say Mortal Kombat, you know, and they can and they can they can fight on the street and whoever wins, you know, wins the conflict or whatever. So like, oh, so they, they got the purge. Out they got the purge out there in Seattle. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, something like that. So like. You know, around our areas, you know, we get in a fight, you know, we're going to jail. But yeah. if you say that, whatever that word is for that law, then y'all can just, you know, square up and fight and leave it on the street. Say so what? It, what was it in the in the um in the Hamilton? Uh, the duel, the, the duel. ten, the ten, the ten duel commandments. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to see somebody do like the, the uh, Michael Jackson beat it fight scene. With the knife. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, that's hilarious. all right well this has been great specs thank you for coming on um hopefully we can have you again some other time in the future but uh yeah. is there anything you want to let any of our listeners know before we go though um maybe it should, it should be called um ace kuna i believe i said that before <laughs> oh. um right. make sure uh, yeah, um, you should get one made. You should get a 3D print of the H blade, you know, weapon made. But uh, I'm working on it. No, I'm working on it. <laughs> is, there not, is there anything you're not working on? Let me, I mean, seriously, <laughs> yeah. But other than that, man, um, go look at the Kickstarter. Uh, if you're skeptical, I got chapter one on the Kickstarter for boots there. You can read for free and you know, see how the chapter one's going. Um, if not, you don't want to spend any money, you can just. You know, uh, write me on uh, Facebook, and Instagram, uh, Instagram, and Legacy of You, and just keep up, with it. keep up with the uh, the campaign. You know, my journey to you know Silver Screen because I'm pretty sure it's gonna be on either animated or live action. You know, within a couple of years because way everybody else show get picked up and everybody looking for properties. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure this one's gonna be one they can pick up. So. Do that, well, man. Legacy of You. With with all due respect, don't listen to specs. You want to actually spend some money on this man. Buy his yeah. book, support support yeah, creators. Buy, buy. Don't we don't want to get stuff for free and, we, and like more Instagram. I'll do all yeah, of like that. him too, but spend some money on the man. He's he's put out good work. All right. Yeah. In this in this campaign, you get two books before you know pretty good price. Two properties. I mean, not two books. You get more, hey. more than one book. Yeah. You can get, you can get up to eight. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's what we want. We want. We want books out there for people to read we don't want banned books we want people to be supporting creators so definitely go out and support him go to his kickstarter you know help the man out as best as possible hey did y'all see the uh that the, 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 the image of chaz and tommy so we talked about power Rangers earlier did y'all see that the you said image of what so i got a custom piece of uh made with chaz standing next to tommy the green ranger i, I got a custom piece made and, no, and Tom Jason David Frank came to my city and he signed it. Oh. So that's because of artwork I have. And uh he he got three of my comic books. You know, he, he really liked it. 
Nice. I love it. I love it. Yeah, Jackson Black Davis Green. He said he gonna make that Green Ranger money for his entire life. <laughs> <laughs> it is worth it. And it's, it's worth it. it. And it's worth it. They was like uh, charging like 40, 50 bucks just for like signing one thing. Like then they were like don't combo it. I pay it. I would pay it too. I mean, I paid it obviously. <laughs> I was like, it adds up. You got a couple issues in the in the power of the toy. Like, golly. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, thanks for thanks for coming on. Um, Kyron, where can people find you? Oh, okay. Well, uh, you can find my work at TaurusComics.com. Uh, I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Taurus Comics. Um, and yeah, I don't do TikTok anymore. Uh, I have an account, but I just don't do it. I, I got too much going on right now, dude. I'm literally putting together four different comics at the same time. So I, <laughs> I sh- shut up. All right, Danny, where can we find you at? <laughs> uh, you can find me at www.fourthwallpros.com or all of my social media sites are at the Ace Blade. That's TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, um, Blue Wave, um, VK. Uh, and all of those, every everyone is Blue can... Wave. Is that like OnlyFans? What? The... Don't worry about it. Don't worry about what it is. <laughs> hey, hey y'all, hey, y'all got my fan base yet? <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't got on there yet. I'm uh-uh. thinking about it though. Me too. Me too. Okay. All right. Well, since you you got to finish up with where can we find the rest of the fourth Four Tales podcast stuff because you you end in so. If you want to check out uh, everybody, thank you for um, liking and subscribing. And, um, and, and rating us on, on iTunes. That does help us reach a larger audience. If you want to catch up with all the episodes of Fortel Podcast, just go to fortelpodcast.com and you can uh, get all of the episodes, just like our last episode that we did with Specs here back in June of last or July of last year. Um, so we appreciate y'all. Thank you. Sayonara. What wait, is it that you all say? Wait, wait, wait. Who's on the show next week? Who is on the show next week? Uh, All right. So next week we have uh, George Gant from Beware of Toddler. That's right. Uh, (laughs) Uh, So definitely join us next time. See the hilarity that ensues because, you know, Danny don't know what he's doing. (laughs) I I don't know what's going on today. You want me to talk about what's going on next week? I don't know. (laughs) All right. All right. But until next time, Sarnara, goodbye. And. Please take care of yourselves. Music provided by my brother, Quicks Made It. Find him online in YouTube, Instagram, and SoundCloud. I want to know what it is Quick is trying to say.